Listen, it doesn't matter what Bernie Sanders accomplishes. It doesn't matter how well he does. Corporate media will never give him the praise that he deserves. They just won't. But there's a very specific reason for that. And the reason why they always overlook him and dismiss him is because he's a threat to them. Them dismissing Bernie Sanders in every way, shape, or form, that's just the confirmation that we need that he is, in fact, the real deal. We're never going to see, you know, a glowing puff piece on CNN about Bernie Sanders. We're not going to see a ton of glowing articles written about him by these elitist DC pundits. But that just means that he truly is an outsider and he's going to change the system. Um, and it's really important because even if it may be discouraging to see, you know, the candidate that you support not really be taken very seriously by mainstream media, even if it's expected, you know, it can still feel a little bit demoralizing. But in an interview with The Hill, Nina Turner explained exactly why this is the case. It's because Bernie Sanders is a threat. And let me just say everything that she says here is so profound. Like hearing her speak about this, it actually gave me chills because she has a way of saying things that it just makes it click. Like she, unlike perhaps any other speaker I've ever heard, has a way of just making me feel energized and inspired. And everything she said here was so on point. So this is what she said in response to a question from Crystal Ball about why Bernie Sanders isn't taken seriously by the media and why they always, you know, downplay and uh, otherwise dismiss him. Yesterday on the show, I talked about the fact that, you know, after that unbelievable quarter, $25 million, beating the whole field, yes. most individual donations in presidential history, all of that, Washington Post writes an article, a news article, not opinion, a news article saying Bernie Sanders' campaign has no momentum. No secret, we've covered the, you know, the sort of, I would say contempt that much of the media has yes. for the campaign. Where, do you, where does that come from? What's your analysis of, of why that persistently is the case? The system is not just going to bend to Senate. Senator Sanders is a threat to the system. That's why. Mm -hmm. And the system is not just going to bend on its own to his will, the will of making this system work for the greatest number of people. So you got to make it do it. In the words of Bre Brother Frederick Douglass, power can seize nothing without a demand. And so because the system, the senator has been so transparent about, hey, I'm coming for you. I mean, he has, even has an anti-endorser mm -hmm. list, as you know. They refuse to give him the credit that he deserves in his image. Hell, the Democratic Party and all of the Democratic candidates that are running right now wouldn't even have a platform without Senator Bernard Sanders. Mm -hmm. They all are, to some extent, whether they want to admit it or not, are preaching from the gospel, coming, reading from the gospel according to Senator Bernard Sanders. Yeah. And that is a good thing. The senator always says it's not about him, it is about us, and he really does mean that. But when you have somebody that's bold enough to say Medicare for all, that we should stop commodifying health care, saying that people should have a $15 an hour minimum wage, and not just saying it though, but on the front lines with the fight for 15, on the front line with Amazon workers and Disney workers, over 400,000 people get a raise, a living wage, not because he's in not because he holds the seat, but because he's right there out there with the people. If he can do all that before he becomes president, imagine what we could do. I can hear him saying this yeah. now. <laughs> imagine what we can do yeah. once he gets in the office. So it's just a flat out contempt mm -hmm. for a man who said quite clearly that I'm coming for you. I am going to challenge a corrupt system that puts its weight on the everyday people of this nation. You know, I was just in South Carolina and I, I marched with the Fight for 15 workers there and it was McDonald's workers. And I remember having a pillow side with a young lady, her name is Tanya, she's in her 20s, and she started crying to me about how she works two jobs and she's working as hard as she can, she's doing the best that she can, but she still can't make it. And she said, you know, I'm single, I don't have any children, but I'm trying my best. Mm -hmm. So you look at Tanya, who's a single, young mm -hmm. woman, right. and then you look at women who do have children, and then women and men, I'm not genderizing this, right, mm -hmm. sure. what I'm saying is that people are really suffering right, right now, and they are calling on a champion who won't equivocate, who won't say one thing on the debate stage, another thing when they get off, won't say one thing during the primary, and then yeah, do another right. thing in the general, and right. that champion is Senator Bernie Sanders. So to the system, he's coming for them, mm -hmm. and they should be afraid. Well, Nina Turner is absolutely amazing. Every single thing she said there is 100% on point. Bernie Sanders is the real deal. And 
it's evident that, you know, if you are in this elite bubble, you benefit from the status quo and you don't want to change the status quo, then uh, when you see a candidate who's directly saying, I'm coming after you, I'm going to raise your taxes, of course, they're not going to take kindly to that because everyone who's in these DC bubbles, you know, the CNN, MSNBC, Fox News pundits, they all are multimillionaires, right? They all attend the same cocktail parties. It's a big club and you ain't in it as, uh, you know, uh, George Carlin would say. But she explains that it's because he's the real deal. She says, Bernie Sanders is a threat to the system and the system isn't just going to bend to his will. Exactly. They're not just going to all of a sudden recognize that Bernie Sanders has managed to change the game by setting a new standard for the way that presidential campaigns raise money. They're not going to acknowledge him for that. They're not going to give him credit for floating a wealth tax before Elizabeth Warren. So what do they do? Well, you know, if you're the Washington Post, you just say Bernie Sanders now channels Warren and introduces a wealth tax. They're never going to give him the credit that he deserves because they know that he is a threat. So they're not going to bend to his will. He's going to make them bend to his will. They're not going to do that willingly. And this is obvious, but the way that Nina Turner says it, it just it, it's it makes so much sense. She also says, because Bernie Sanders has been so transparent about saying he's coming for them, he even released an anti-endorsement list. They refused to give him the credit that he deserves. That's also true. And here's what she said about other 2020 Democrats that I love. They are all, to some extent, whether they admit it or not, preaching from the gospel, reading from the gospel, according to Senator Bernard Sanders. That is precisely it. When you watch these debates, these national debates, a lot of the conversations that we are having, they've been catalyzed by Bernie Sanders. The only reason why we're even debating, you know, healthcare reform within the confines of, you know, single payer versus Obamacare plus something else is because of Bernie Sanders. Bernie Sanders was, you know, a shit stirrer in 2016 and he still is. And the most profound, most important thing that he did by running against Hillary Clinton in 2016 is yank that Overton window to the left. It's still, you know, moving slowly, but he gave it a really hard tug. And because of what he did, because of his effort, he reshaped political discourse in this country. So we're not just talking about, you know, should we just, you know, uh, do a couple of fixes to the Affordable Care Act? Um, no, we're talking about full on single payer health care. This is all because of Bernie Sanders. People like Kamala Harris have to devise plans that are not Medicare for all, that are literally called Medicare for all, because they know that if you want to get elected, you need to be progressive. Bernie Sanders has just substantially changed political discourse, not just in the Democratic Party, but nationally. I mean, think about this. When Bernie Sanders was running on Medicare for All in 2016, 2015 as well, there was not majority support among the general population for Medicare for All. You know, Democrats, Democratic Party voters, the base, they always supported it. But Bernie Sanders changed that. He shifted support for this. Now most people want Medicare for All. And some polls show that a majority of Republicans want Medicare for All. He's not going to get credit for that. Now also... She talks about, you know, all the things that Bernie Sanders managed to accomplish as a senator by getting, you know, Amazon and Disney workers a living wage. And he did this just by putting pressure on these companies. He literally subverted the legislative process. So he demonstrated that he is a force to be reckoned with. And she said here something that gave me chills. Imagine what we can do if he becomes president. And that really... That should inspire a lot of optimism, right? Because Bernie Sanders was able to raise the minimum wage of Amazon workers without a law being passed. Without a single vote, he got that accomplished just by putting pressure on them. So he already has them scared. Imagine if he were president, what we could accomplish. Maybe we could actually get Medicare for all. Maybe we could actually get money out of politics if bernie sanders is already this influential when he's not president when he's just a senator imagine what he could do as president what we could do as president that line right there 
That was remarkable. And I'm so glad that she said it. And I've made a, like a similar statement before. But again, there's something about the way that, you know, uh, Nina Turner says it and the way that she frames it that just, it's so much more powerful. And it makes so much sense. Now, finally, she said, People are really suffering right now, and they're calling on a champion who won't equivocate, who won't say one thing on a debate stage and another thing when they get off, won't say one thing during the primary and then do another thing in the general, and that champion is Senator Bernie Sanders. So to me, when she says something like that, even though she didn't, like, cite anyone's name, um, she's touching on... The frustration that I feel with Elizabeth Warren, because I've always been a fan of Elizabeth Warren. Of course, we don't have to rehash this, but but in 2016, I lost a lot of faith in her. Um, but, you know, Elizabeth Warren, she was wavering on Medicare for All after endorsing it. But then at the debate, she came out swinging. You know, I support Medicare for All, and she raised her hand to get rid of private insurance. But then, you know, after the debate was over, she was saying, I support, you know, uh, I support other plans too. This isn't a contest. So that frustration there, it, it really irritates me because on one hand, you know, I have to give politicians credit for actually supporting Medicare for all. But at the same time, when you have someone in the race like Bernie Sanders, where I don't have to question whether or not he's committed to Medicare for all, you know, um, why would you opt for someone who there are these open questions. Will this person actually fight for Medicare for all? They say they support it. They say that it's a great idea. But when push comes to shove, when the insurance companies start raining down on them, start lobbying against them, who's going to stand strong? Is that going to be anyone but Bernie Sanders? No, I don't think so. And that's the difference between Bernie Sanders and everyone else in this race. He's the only candidate who has walked the walk. He's the only candidate who I trust is going to fight for Medicare for All because he has had this same position and he's never wavered on it, not once, ever. So everything that, you know, Nina Turner is saying here is music to my ears. You know, making that point about the uh, general election pivot, saying one thing in the primary and then something different in the uh, general. You know, I can't help but think that's a reference to Hillary Clinton shifting to the center in uh, the general election, picking Tim Kaine as VP. Look, we just want someone who is real. Part of the reason why younger voters don't come out and support politicians is because they really don't feel like they can trust someone. Why would you, you know, um, jump through the hoops that you need to jump through in certain states when there's voter ID laws and voter suppression, closed primaries? Why would you go through all of that if you really don't feel confident that the person you're wasting all this time, what feels to them like a waste of time voting for, isn't actually willing to fight for you? So we need someone like Bernie Sanders who is trustworthy, who can instill confidence in voters that he will actually fight for him, that he's worth the time that they are going to put in voting or caucusing for him. And um, it's Bernie. And nobody can really illustrate how that's the case. Nobody can really make a better case than Nina Turner. I think even she's better at making the case for Bernie than Bernie is in some instances. She's just fantastic. And he's absolutely the luckiest candidate to have her on his team because she is fantastic and um the more i hear from her the more fired up i get so she needs to be on television she needs to be the face of the sanders campaign because she is absolutely phenomenal at what she does